Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Fanboy Podcast. I'm your host, Fanboy, and I'm joined today by Cybra. Now, Hi. Cybra, would you like to introduce yourself? Give us a rundown of what you do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. I'm a 20 year old uh, rapper, singer, songwriter from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. So, kind of like not that well known of a neighborhood out here in Brooklyn, but I've been doing this for about two, three years. Uh, I started taking it seriously around like my junior year of high school. And ever since then, I've just been, you know, trying to make a living out of what I love, you know what I'm saying? And I've been dropping a song every month since like October. And, uh, you know, I'm just really trying to, like I said, just trying to make something fruitful out of what I'm doing. So, but yeah, this is, this is what I love. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be on and, you know, start talking. Sweet, sweet. Uh, so how long have you actually uh, been making music for? Since you've been taking um, it seriously since? Yeah, yeah. Like, because I, I started when I was like, 14 I want to say like that was the first time I really was like oh like this is something like it's cool like I enjoy doing this because I was listening to like M like the real Slim Shady and yeah you know um just like like a lot of like older rap and that really kind of like inspired me because that was the first rap I ever listened to like Nas, Kanye, Eminem stuff like that and it really just kind of made me want to try it but it wasn't for like a good two three years it wasn't anything that I was like oh shit like this is something that I want to do for my life but, um, you know, I started when I was like 14, I was doing like little stuff like on my computer, I would, you know, like record stuff off my phone, like on, you know, voice memos and shit. And then once I hit like 16, 17, that's when I was really like, um, oh, crap, like this is something like what I need to do. It was like, well, I was like really down, like my junior year of high school, I wasn't having a good year. And I realized like, oh, shit, like this is like what's getting me through life. And then ever since then, I've gone through like ups and downs and shit, of course. But ever since then, I was like, oh, yeah, like this is what I need to do. So like it started at 14. But it really became a thing when I was like 16, 17, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. And, and yeah. how long do you think it's taken to get, get to where you are now? Like, uh, in terms of like spending time on your craft? Yeah, yeah. Like mindset wise, mean and shit. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. What was your mindset? Um, I mean, like, it's taken me a while to get, because I'm at a point now where I'm confident in what I'm doing. It's just trying to figure out like how to, you know, like how to learn um certain things in the business and you know like move forward but um when I was when I first started I was like I was very much like so happy to be doing it that I wasn't thinking about anything else but then once I started like seeing everybody else doing shit like popping off and like making moves and getting views and shit, I was like I started getting like it was a blow to my confidence because I was like I don't know how to do that shit I'm just fucking like writing raps in my notebook during math class but um once I started really like tapping into what I was doing and I started like really becoming like a competent artist that's when I was like that's when it became something that I was more at ease with. I still have my days where I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And, you know, I have the confusion and yeah. the, like the kind of like the lost vision, but um, you know, it, it took me like a couple of years, but now I'm kind of at a place where I'm like consistently confident in at least like the music I'm making, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pretty much. yeah. How, how do you get out of that, that lost vision? Oh, word. I mean, it, it takes a lot. It's not it, like, cause sometimes, you know, and with, with the work, with, like when it comes to like overthinking and stuff, if you're an overthinker, it's even worse. Cause like, yeah. it just hits you every single day. It's like, you know, like you have like five seconds where you're like, yo, I'm the shit. And then it's like 20 days of like, yo, I don't know what I'm doing, but um, I'd say that it's really important not to like invest too much in the, in the highs and the lows, because there's days where if, if I'm doing good or if I'm getting a lot of views or like a lot of people like my song or get you know, on a playlist or something, I feel like on top of the world and I can't be stopped. Like I feel like I'm going to be meeting with yay like in the next fucking day. But then if there's a day where like stuff's not really popping off, or I put out a song, it doesn't get the best reception. I just, I just want to like, I don't know what to do. Like I just, I sit on my couch and I'm like, I don't know what, like, I, I just, I, I don't know what to do anymore. And I feel like, it's more important to stay kind of just straight rather than going too high or too too low because if you invest too much in that, it's just going to be a roller coaster for your whole experience, and it's not going to be you're not going to be able to maintain these feelings you're feeling. You know what I'm saying? Even the good feelings, like it, obviously when you have a win, if you get a W in something like it, you should celebrate it, you should be happy for it. But um, a lot of times I find myself like investing too much in that, and I'm like, oh shit, like like I feel like I'm you know like I can't be stopped now. Like I feel like I'm like a second away from blowing up. But that's not how it works you know what i'm saying so like i think the the main thing is just persisting i think the main thing is like just sticking to it even if you have bad days just like the next day get up and do something to like you know forward yourself even if it's like sending a dm or fucking you know like write something or writing a hook or like finding a beat getting inspired in any way or just like talking to somebody in in, in the industry or something like 
just do something. Even if you're at your lowest, like do something at least to like push yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've been trying to do. So I'm just kind of, you know, that's like, you know, my biggest advice for someone who's still doing it, you know? So that's what I was for sure. I'd, I'd say I for sure have problems with that myself. Like I'll yeah. go through, I'll post a podcast, Spotify and YouTube, and then I'll make three Instagram posts in a day. And then like the next day, maybe I party yeah. the night before or like I, I have fun and I don't really care. And the next day I don't oh, feel yeah. like it at all. So I just don't, sometimes I just don't feel like it. Yeah. And that, it's that like, I'll go for days or even yeah. like a, a week of like mm-hmm. not posting. And then it's almost like yeah. the fear of like, I've been gone for so long. Like, what are these yeah, guys yeah. going to think when I come back? So it's almost I, best to just. Absolutely. Uh, think about I it. definitely. And I see like, you're like, you know, like, I, cause I, I mentioned like a couple months ago, just linking up with you, like on over yeah. uh, Instagram and stuff. And I saw like that this was something that you really enjoyed, like just talking about rap and like, you know, doing the podcast and just, you know, just being an outlet for rap news. Like I, I knew, I, I knew, I saw that it was something that you were interested in. And, but like, even with this shit, like, even if it's our passion, like it's not people, people think that even like if you see someone successful or doing something or doing good, like they think we're just loving this shit all the time. But sometimes I hate, like, I hate the feeling of like, oh, I got to do this or it's like, yeah. I got to do that. Being like, I hate having the feeling of like and that's where you got to realize like oh like i don't want this shit to become a job like this is gonna be my job like if, if it goes if shit goes well it's gonna be my job like it's gonna be something i make money off of that that's the goal but i don't want it to be like something i'm clocking in for and being like oh shit i gotta like write this and i gotta link with this part like i don't want it to be like that if it's like that i'm gonna quit and i'm gonna just go do something else i'm gonna find something else that i like you know what i'm saying so um but like yeah i definitely feel that it's like that every day it's like it's so hard to like yeah. always feel like yo it's like i'm so excited like I, there's days where i'm like fuck this shit man i'm just gonna sit down and do nothing but um i think the main thing like i said is that you just keep getting up after that and you know doing something even if if it's one little thing to like forward yourself you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean and i know what you mean by like the feeling of a feeling like work Mm. I don't want it to feel like work. I don't like doing work and stuff. Oh, so, like, I, I, think like I'm, I think I'm lazy. Maybe artists are lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't want to work, so we do this. And mm. it's, it's like whatever can tap into that, like, uh, I don't know, I guess that yeah, that need to do something at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also yeah. balancing, balancing, like, uh, personal, like, uh, your, your life or school and work plus your passion is, is that yeah. is balancing these lives a, a hard thing and like yeah i'd say so because like there's times where i'm going through like I'm, you know i'm doing my thing like i'm writing songs and i'm like trying to forward my career and then there's days where it's like you know like that like family gets not, i wouldn't say get in the way that's a terrible way to say it like if i'm just you know i'm hanging out with my friends and stuff it's like sometimes you got to be in life you know like sometimes like life is very important like you know like the, you know moments with the people you care about and shit. like that's what's important at the end of the day like if i didn't have you know my life outside of this if i was just doing music all the time i wouldn't like it wouldn't be a good life because i got friends and i got family and i got like you know hobbies and shit. like to watch sports i like to play video games and stuff and it's like you know and then i got like you know like personal interests and stuff and i think if, if you like just focus too much if you just shelter yourself and focus too much like oh i gotta make i gotta do this i gotta do that it becomes a boring ass life you know what i'm saying and it becomes lonely and it's like you know, like, like what's, what's important is like, you know, like feeling good and feeling happy and music is not always going to give you that. But like most of the time, your friends and your family and like, you, like, you know, like your hobbies and playing video games or like, you can like listen to a Drake album or, you know, like playing NBA 2K or something like that's what's going to like make you happy. So you got to make sure that you like and still keep that part of your life in there while you're like feeling down about shit and with music and everything. So the balance is definitely important i would say for sure how do you do that though like have you maintained a balance um i'd say like sometimes it's i feel like i'm just now starting to figure it out because i think what i'm doing now is i'm like um while i'm doing stuff like while i'm while i'm making music or like while i'm making a zone where i'm like oh like i'm i gotta talk to this person i'm reaching out to this person and like oh i'm going to the studio tomorrow i'm like Oh, you know what I also got to do? I got to like check up on my friend. Like I like, like I make sure that it's kind of like I have the same kind of motivated mindset. I try to keep that with my personal life too, if that makes sense. Like I try to be like, oh, like I got to, like, I'm, I'm hanging out with my friend tomorrow. I got to like, I got to go like take some time to myself and just not do shit for an hour. Like that's important too. Like not doing nothing. Like while you're like moving fast, like I'm just going to fucking sit down and play video games like in my fucking pajamas. Like that's what I want to do. And then also like, 
you know, like, oh, like, like, like I said, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my family or I'm going to like go see my girl or something like that. That's like, that's like, you got to have the same kind of like mindset where you're like, like really trying to actively engage in that stuff too. Um, so you can have, I think that's where the balance comes in where you're like, oh, like, I want to like do this often too. I want to make sure that I'm taking time, dedicating time to both. You know what I'm saying? Cause if you're just doing one without the other, cause also at the same time, there's like the balance comes into play where you're like, if you're just doing that shit, if you're just fucking around hanging out with your friends, like not doing shit and not doing shit about music, then there's a problem too. So it's like, if you're motivated to like care about both, then I feel like it'll, it'll kind of, you'll just actively start, yeah. you know, like better with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like in a way it, it almost powers each other. Like if you're out <laughs> hanging out, partying every night and then yeah, you yeah. kind of get to the point where you're like, Oh, I should work. I need to work. Yeah. And then yeah, over yeah here, like you're working so much and it's like, I need a break. And then yeah. yeah. Those definitely but that's something definitely. that i'm struggling with hard especially yeah, with too, bro. absolutely bro me too no, i feel you man i like, definitely uh, high mm -hmm. school graduate uh like yeah. part-time job it, on my computer doing this it's like i i need to i need to get out i really want to yeah but, word, bro and, and the fact that it's like uh 90 percent, or actually 100 percent of the work that i do is all online on my mm -hmm. computer on my phone screen and I yeah. hate doing that. I hate sitting down and staring at a screen all day. I'm my school for sure. I feel you. Nah. Yeah, so yeah, you gotta be active too, like sitting down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely not, because it's like you know, if just sitting around. Sorry, this is my, I live in fuck the, the lobby. Like, fuck the police, man. All day, fuck twelve. But <laughs> moving on, um, like pretty much, like I'd say, you know if there's times where you're just kind of, cause I, I try to be like that too, where I'm just sitting on my couch and it's like, I like to just, I've, I've found, I'm finding a new love for just like getting up and doing something rather than just sitting down all the time. Cause like there's days that there's weekend, like a lot of times on the weekends, I find myself doing this where I'm just not doing a damn thing. It's like, I, I kind of have a mindset where it's like, Oh, Monday through Friday, I'm going to work on shit. Like I'm going to make sure that I'm doing like productive stuff. And then the weekends, I don't do a fucking thing. And that's not really the best, that's not the best way to do shit in my opinion, but I'm like that sometimes where it's just like, I sit for like hours in my room, not really doing anything because I feel like I've earned the, the break. And sometimes you do earn a break, you need a lot of breaks. You need to take care of your mind and shit. But, um, you know, sometimes I'm just like, you know, like sitting around doing nothing. And like, like you said, like, I feel like it's important to just like fucking get up and just make sure you're like in the world still, you know what I'm saying? Cause if you're just in your room, doing shit like just like working on whatever you're working on it's easy to just get lost in there and just feel like you're just entrapped in there you know what i'm saying like mentally it's, it's kind of weird but i feel like that's how it works you know what i mean yeah i know i know how that works like i'll be in here working one day all day and then the next day I'll, i need to go out i need to talk to people and i forget how to talk to people for a bit because i oh dear yeah there. i've been there bro i've definitely been there yeah, nah. yeah. It's, it's it's tough too because like, and I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself the most like outgoing person. Like, and I think a lot of artists and people in music say this. So this isn't like the most groundbreaking shit that I'm saying, but I feel like a lot of people in music, just because they have to spend so much time in their brain, like they have to spend so much time, like, you know, coming up with ideas and stuff. Sometimes it's like, we forget like, oh shit, there's like fucking 6 million other people in this world that we got to talk to and interact with. So there's times where it's like, there's days where it's literally like I'm outside and I don't want to talk to people. It's like, it's just it's nothing rude or anything and then i might come off as rude but it's just i just want I, like i need to be in my own space um but you know like i like there's days like you said like where i'm just i was in my like i remember like a couple weeks ago i was um having like an intense like writing session it was just one of those days where i was like in a groove and i was writing for like two three hours and then i had to meet like my friend was like i was doing it right before i had to like link up with one of my friends we were just gonna go hang out and he was like yo you come I'm like oh shit i forgot like i lost time which is good like if you lose time you're passionate it's good but also like you know, I, I, I like, I was like, oh shit. And then I was outside and it felt so weird. Like it was like, oh crap. Like what the fuck am I doing out here? And then we were like linking up with other people and I just felt so such in a fog. And it was exactly what you said. I was like, oh shit, I forgot how to talk to people. So it's yeah. like, like, and that goes right into the balance. Shit. Like you got to make sure that like, you're aware, you got to like, make sure you try to be aware of like what's going on around you while you're like in, invested in shit. So I think that's like important. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. like, uh, yeah, like you said, balance is important with people. And also, yeah. artists, you need to experience life before you get to Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point, too. Like, um, you know, because I'm only 20, so it hasn't, like, it's not like I've lived, like, a shitload of life yet. But yeah. I've, um, you know, like, I, I've just, I'm such an overthinker where it's, like, so I, I make a lot of situations and I make a lot of ideas just because I think so much, um, which is, like, a blessing and a curse, of course. But, um, you know, it's just 
I think, and yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great point too. Cause if you're just like in your room all the time, what are you really going to write about? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you're not, exactly. talking, you're not like, obviously like, cause you know, I, I guess people can have their own problems, like, you know, still without like going outside, but you know, like I have, like, I'm always writing about people like my friends and people in my life and like, you know, going out to places and seeing new things and like, you know, having family problems and shit. And if you're just in your own head and your own space all the time, it's hard to like explore that, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm just now starting to have more experiences in my life, I think, which is good. But um, yeah, you got to get out there and see the world and like, get, get, you know, see more life. You know what I'm saying? It's really important. So that's a good point that you made for sure. Yeah, and this connects yeah. to my last or to my next question. Yeah, so yeah. With, like last year during like the COVID thing, were you yeah. ever were you ever have to, to be stuck in your house for like a mm. quarantine? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because yeah. I'm I'm in um I'm in Brooklyn right now, so uh, like I've been here my whole life. Like I, I was born and raised. Here. So um you know like I remember it was like right before COVID hit, and like 2020 it was already starting off shitty because Kobe died, and that like hit me like a ton of bricks when Kobe Bryant died. And I was like, oh, shit, like, what the, f-? and then, like, a month later, this happened, and I was not, like, nobody was prepared for it, but I remember I was watching, like, the, like, the NBA, like, I saw the NBA post, like, like, NBA's getting shut down, and, like, I, like, stuff was going crazy, and then, um, you know, like, I was, like, I was going to the studio a lot, and, you know, like, everything that I was doing, like, all the people that I was seeing, they all, we all had to, like, separate and go into our own places, and um, just, like, and, and, like, what I'm about to say isn't, like, like super new because probably everybody that was in quarantine went through this but like I went through like a lot of like just shit emotionally like I was just like it was such a, a moment of like yo what's what, what what is life like what am I doing right now like like I just lost everything that I had in contact really? with by myself doing nothing and it's like and it's like what we were talking about before like where it's like oh I'm just in my room playing video games like doing what I want it was like that but 24 7 365 and that wasn't good. Like, that's not fucking healthy. And, um, you know, and every time I wanted to go out, I had to like be so different, like act in a way that I couldn't, like, I didn't know how to act because it was because of COVID and shit. So it really hit me like a ton of bricks. But again, it's like, and, and you know, saying that is like kind of sort of selfish because like there's people that fucking died from this shit. Like I'm blessed to, that I got a lot and I'm like fully vaccinated now. And, you know, I'm blessed that I'm like a- away from that. But, um, you know, it definitely hit me like, like really hard, just emotionally at, at least, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I know some people, actually most people probably weren't that happy during it, but for some reason, I mm-hmm. was I was kicked out of uh, my media school, and I, or, I was stuck at home for two weeks by myself. I'm like, no one else is going to do shit. No one's going to do this shit at all, so I'm going to get a head start. So I was able, that, that's what motivated me, was that I got this head start, and I had only time to work, because it's like, well, it's basically time wasted now. Since yeah, yeah. Like my room. This doesn't matter. So let's just work with all this time that doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 for sure. When I come out of it, it'll be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think now that like it's eased up, I'm like, yeah. well, I was working all year last yes last year when you guys were stuck in your room. I I don't want to work now. It's like yeah, 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 all right. time. Now it's I, I'm <laughs> almost like it's like reverse in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's funny. So you feel like like do you think like right like as it was going on, you still had a positive mindset? Do you think like oh, yeah. still it was, okay. it was probably better because it gave word. Me, like motivation to work to work a lot harder and work more. oh word that's lit yeah because i was like i had like a like a big moment of um because i was still right like i was still doing it it wasn't like I, I stopped writing for like eight nine months but i was like doing stuff but it was like you know it was like the kind of classic thing that everybody went through where it was like oh like i can't do this anymore i can't go to here anymore like i was gonna i wanted to go to an open mic in the summer and I couldn't do it anymore. Like, I, like, like the shit was like, they were doing it over Zoom and I didn't want to do it over Zoom. Like I wanted to be like, be live and do it in front of a state, like a, you know, a, an audience, or whatever. So it was like, I couldn't do any of the things that I wanted to do to forward myself. So I was just like, kind of like, so like that hit me hard. Um, but like, yeah, like now I kind of have a thing where it's like, I'm at least looking at it positive. Like, I feel like that's good that you were able to like positively look at it while you were in it. But now, thankfully for me, like I'm able to like look at it, look back at it positively. Because yeah. when I was in, I was in my feelings, like, I was in my bag, I was fucked up. But now that I look back at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that was that was good for me. Like I needed that. I needed that like eight months or just reflecting and shit. You know what I'm saying? I think it's something that a lot of people needed, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, like, bro. Disconnected, and ironically, it got me like less connected to social media too. Where, where, where? So where? I was just like, I kind of became an outsider, and I didn't get all like uh, mentally unhealthy to the end of the year yeah yeah. when all like 
everything kind of happened at once. So like, uh, all right, all the, like my conspiracy, I turned into like a conspiracy theorist last year. I was crazy. I was like uh, almost antisocial and I was Burn. smoking all the time. And then just like yeah. my mindset was like somewhere else. I was complete hippie yeah. mode out of outside. Of, and right, then because I, I wasn't talking to anybody. Right. And then now I'm coming back. It's like I'm easing away from that. and I'm becoming more social. But at the same time, I'm losing that motivation to work right. more. So I feel like I almost need that isolation yeah. in a way. But I feel like, how is you, how do you think you are with like, um, like, were you always involved with like social media a lot? Like, was that always something you gave a shit about? Or you just kind of like had a time where you're like, I don't really care about this. Number. I never really cared about it that much uh, in terms of like growing, but mm-hmm. I would waste my time with it, looking at memes and stuff. And I'm like, Oh yeah. 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 One day I was just like, why am I looking at a, a, a piece of glass? It's a black with yeah. no with no battery. It's just a black piece of glass, you know. Yeah, I mean? right. Oh, yeah. No, that's funny, man. Not for sure, for sure. Like, and it's like we 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 don't even realize like how much time. Like, there's times where I catch myself. Like, I'm at work. Like, cause I work at um the job I work at. I do co- uh, like cleaning for COVID. So like I like disinfect shit like in this building, and um like but I I don't have it's like a job where I don't have to be on my feet like working 24 seven. So I have my phone on me and I'll just be like surfing like surfing through Instagram. And I'll like look and it, like 20 minutes will pass. And I'm like, I've literally just been looking at bullshit for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm saying like, I've, I've just been looking at nothing for 20 minutes. And I'm like, holy shit, it's looking like 30 minutes past. What the fuck am I doing? And it's like, it's so, and then it like, because it's so weird too, because when we're just like no, us normal kids, like that's just ingrained in our brain. So it's like, we're just going through life, going through high school. Like in high school, everybody was using Instagram in, in my high school, of course. Cause I'm like, you know, like we're just in high school in New York, but um, like, you know, like it was so ingrained in us that we, it's just, we just carry it through life and we're just in, you know, like we waste so much time on it and I'm a victim of it too. I'm not even trying to like, like comment on it. Like I'm not doing the same thing, yeah. but um, you know, like I feel like now a big thing I'm trying to do in the future now is like trying to find ways to like separate from it a little bit and not depend on it as much. And uh, you know, like not use my phone before bed and like, cause that's a big thing that people say like, Oh, don't use your phone before bed. And you know, like, like try to like, you know, limit your social media time. I'm probably not going to cut it off because I feel like I want to like keep it just for, you know, marketing purposes and trying to get myself out there. But um, like, I really don't want to like get too caught up in the bullshit of it because every social media has like a really toxic side to like TikTok and TikTok is probably one of the worst ones yeah. because you like, if you go too long on TikTok, you'll just see bullshit on there. But that's like every, you know, site. But that's, um, why, that's why I don't want to use TikTok because I feel like yeah. it's, it's, I'm going to be stuck on there watching videos oh yeah subscribe. just like going and the tiktok's the easiest one too because it's like it's like you know it's not like instagram where you have like a lot of different you, you just you, you know like have a lot of different things like oh like i can post on this story or i can like talk to somebody here like someone dm me someone send it to my dms tiktok is like you can waste five hours just doing this you know what i'm saying yeah. just like watching video 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 and um you know it's like it just becomes like a rabbit hole you know what i'm saying but um like yeah and no, i definitely feel so i'm trying to like work on kind of distancing a little bit from it um while i'm still doing like important shit on it but yeah no it's important to like kind of you know be mindful of that you don't want to get lost in that shit because it can really fuck you up yeah for sure and like you i I, you'd be surprised like the amount of people that i see uh, at a function and they're just sitting looking at tiktok yeah bro sure yeah Uh, parties and shit yeah it's weird man like it's it's so weird or in the hallways or at the mall i see people looking down staring and that's maybe i sound like an old person now i don't give a fuck i feel that's like yeah (laughs) it's mad funny bro yeah no like because i'll I'll be with um i'll be with my family and i'm the same way now like i like i kind of and the funny thing it's funny that you said that because every time i do it i'm like oh i feel like i'm I'm a boomer for like how i'm like thinking right now like why are you fuckers on your phones but like i'll be at like i'll be with my family or something and i'll notice instantly when, I, when i'm on my phone and i don't want to do it when i'm like with people because it's like it's like it feels so cliche too because now like the, uh, like a lot of people in the past have memed about it like everybody's been using their phone at the table like we're like we're like all like we came to li- like we linked with each other to see each other and talk to each other and we're like all sitting at this like table at a restaurant like all on our phones like looking at but just doing the same shit we were just talking about and looking at memes and shit looking at fucking pieces of glass and we're with people that we wanted to like we were like talking for a week oh yo we're gonna like link on sunday you know what i'm saying like yeah. this i really try to be I, and for some reason it's easier for me to do it while i'm with people for some reason i don't know why like when i'm by myself it's easy to just kind of get lost in it but when i'm with people i'm like nah, i'm not i'm gonna be like in the conversation like i'm not gonna you know like I still love social media and stuff. Like I still love texting and all that shit. But 
when I'm like with people, I try to be like, nah, I gotta fucking like, I gotta like be in this moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's important. You know what I'm saying? You can't like, you're just using your phone. Like you might as well just fucking be inside. Like there's no reason to be with people if you're just gonna be doing that. You know yeah, I mean? for sure. It's like, I use it as like a way to make plans with people. Yeah. And then I talk to them in person. Yeah, bro, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Actually on some music news, like recent yeah. music news. Uh, right. Did you see the, the Donda listening event? Oh, nah, like, I, cause I was like, I was checking all day to like hear, like to, to see if he, if he dropped it. Cause wasn't it supposed to drop today, Donda or not? Nah? Yeah. It was supposed to drop last night. Where? Uh, yeah. Cause I was yeah. looking for it and I saw that and I was like, I want to listen to the album first before I do that. But, but I'm sure like, I'm sure like, I always knew that when I, when I watched it, it was going to be lit. Like, cause I know Kanye is like, he's a fucking like amazing performer. Like he's crazy. So, um, and he always makes something out of nothing. Like he's always able to make something out of nothing. And he like makes everything a big event, but I didn't, um, I wanted to, like, I wanted to like listen to the album first, but I don't know what's going on. With him. I, and I, I never, I love him to death, but I never trust him. If he tells me like, Oh, like July, blah, blah, blah. I'm dropping this. I'm like, I believe it when I see it on fucking Spotify and I'm listening to it. Like, I believe it then. Till then, shut the fuck up. I'm not trying to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's real. I bro. literally just checked before we started this interview and he still hasn't dropped it. I don't know, man. Like, and, and I feel like he's got like, like it feel it felt different this time around. I'm like, oh, I feel like he's got like a whole body of work. Like he's got some here. Like he, it feels like he's yeah, got yeah. some. Like I didn't believe it when what was the, the, the other one he was trying? Yandi. Like, like Yandy. I didn't oh, believe yeah. it. I, I was never like Yandi ain't dropped. Like, I, I never thought because my, my friend, one of my closest friends. Uh, is a big Kanye fan, but he got he kind of got got put on the Kanye like right when Life of Pablo dropped, and he was like really into that kind of era. So he didn't. It, it's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird Kanye fan, but he doesn't even know like what made. He doesn't really like fuck with too heavy. What made Kanye Kanye? He just liked the Life of Pablo, and he was like talking to me like all the time when Yanni was about to drop, <laughs> and like, oh, he was so disappointed when that shit didn't drop. And I was like, I was like, I love Kanye, but I'm not like like a kind of like oh I, I need to like I'm gonna listen to that shit the day it drops kind of Kanye fan. But with Donda, I was like that. I really wanted to listen to it, like, right, like, as I got to work and, like, this morning and shit. But I don't know, man. I'm not um, sure. I hope it I, drops soon. You know what yeah, I, mean? I hope it drops. I don't think it, I don't think it will. I mean, because I have yeah. a point that I want to get to soon. Word, but word. I did yeah. see, I did see the thing on YouTube because someone leaked it. Yeah. And it was all right. Like, I, I won't touch much on the music because I'll leave yeah. that to you. But he kind of yeah, just yeah. stood there walking around the whole time. It wasn't, like, a, a big thing. He kind of played the album and just walked around with a mask on. oh really oh weird. Yeah. that's weird was, he, was, <laughs> was there people and that like was was there an audience there? yeah yeah there's an audience but uh, it, was, it was really bizarre it was really yeah. weird it was an empty stadium and he came on like a red jumpsuit and a mask and just kind of stood there walked around yeah. a bit lip synced a bit and then yeah. it was over it was a really weird uh atmosphere that's, his his whole like like you can make a movie out of like just weird ass Kanye like moments on stage. Like you just like, and if you search it up, like, Oh, Kanye, blah, blah, blah on stage. Like there's like rants and like fucking him wearing some weird ass shit. Like yeah. he has so many moments and obviously it makes it like contributes to like his legacy and like his like just um, craziness. And that that's a good thing. Cause like people are talking about him, but um, like he, he always like is able to like make an event out of something. Like every time he opens his mouth practically at this point, yeah. like, he is mentally like every time he opens his mouth like he's gonna like starts talking he's gonna get like somebody to like fucking post about it and some of it's, it's gonna be people are gonna be talking about it, you know what i mean yeah so I that it, yeah i think maybe this was like a trial i think this was like a trial because the the album sounded to me uh it sounded unfinished it sounded mm. really empty mm. so maybe he's like he's doing this so people can hear it and then get yeah. feedback and then drop it eventually I have no Maybe. idea if it's gonna drop still, but and what kind of if that's exactly what he was doing, I would believe it hundred percent. Like, cause that's just how he is. Like, I like I don't expect the normal. I don't expect. I don't ever expect Kanye to do the normal yeah. way. Like, I, like I don't expect him to go the normal route ever. But he like posted it. Like I saw. Like he posted on IG. Like he posted a little like promo video. I didn't like watch all of it, but he was like promoting it, right? Like like it was like all like just regular like oh i'm dropping this like this is happening like you know like oh i have a promo video for it i have the, he had the cover art for it and she like that was i'm pretty sure he, like i don't know did he post the cover art like the the, the gray and red like or i don't think it was just... him himself but someone within the i guess his, his uh his group or whatever his group he has posted it but he like or... he got apple music like if you look at apple music they have this thing called day of yay yeah and it's like playlists full of kanye west because they expected the album to drop where it didn't happen so that 
he's getting yeah. Apple Music, all these companies in on it, uh, Nike. Yeah, man. It's like, and they're probably like tight at him right now. Like, <laughs> he'd be like, we did all this shit for him, and there goes Kanye not dropping it. Like, oh, what a shocker. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't, if I was, like, I, like I said, and this is all due respect to like he's one of the goats. Like I'm never gonna like say Kanye is like a bad artist or and no matter what he does, even if he like dropped the worst album ever, yes. Like I'm never gonna like I mean tomorrow I'm not gonna hate on him. But um, if I was like a, like someone that worked for one of these streaming platforms, I wouldn't like you know promote my I wouldn't start putting on my app Kanye's dropping it until that shit drop. If he drops it, no matter if it's good or bad, I'm be like yo Kanye West drop. But if like he hasn't done it yet and it's not like Kanye hasn't like dropped it yet. I'm not fucking like make you know making my platform all pretty with Kanye art and yeah. shit. like I'm not doing that because it's like or I'm like making playlists based on it. I can't do that because like with him you can't really trust him in that sense. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like like it's but like like I said, Kanye is you know he's just he he's gotten to a point where you can't really touch him. You know, so you can't you can't talk too bad about him. It's, at least his music. Like obviously his mindset. Sometimes like people get questions about it, but. Um, he, he's just so good what would you say um is your like favorite kanye album um it's very close it's uh dark fantasy and mm. runner up is yeezus oh where okay 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 what do you like about yeezus because i never that was the one i didn't give like when i heard it, it came out when i was like 13 i was too young and i didn't hear it but um what do you think is like the best part about it because i haven't really listened to it that much Yeezus yeah. is like the one i i like i like the production and yeah. I like I like the mood of the album. It's a very mm-hmm. dark mood, and I I like songs like "Hold My Liquor," oh, um, we're okay. uh, "Blood on the Leaves," the more emotional kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. and "Black Skinhead." Like I, I remember I, yeah. I heard "Black Skinhead," and that's like probably like the most. I feel like from what I've heard, it sounds like the most like hit sounding song on that whole thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, like "Blood on the Leaves" is really good. Like I heard that too, but I haven't heard the whole thing front to back. I'll probably do that after this interview. Fuck it, but. Mine is probably, um, I have a lot, like I have a few, cause I love Graduation. Like Graduation was one of the first, like there's a lot of songs on that album that were like the first songs I ever heard, like in terms of hip hop. Like I heard Flashing Lights when I was like six, seven. And that was like, right after it came out, like I was playing it in like a in 2006 Toyota car with my aunt. And it was like, I was playing Flashing Lights, like Homecoming and shit. And then like a mate, like 808s and Heartbreak, I really love um, just because it was like, I was listening to when I was younger. But mine's has to probably be um, graduation is probably up there. But then, uh, yay! I like yay a lot too. Like I like really? it's just yeah, yeah. I, I fuck with yay. Like because I was I remember listening to it with my friend uh, together, and I just thought that shit was like really good. To, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, what do you like about yay? Because for mm-hmm. me, like yay is probably its worst. Just in, because word, I feel word. like it's unfinished. It sounds like word. yeah. I feel like that too. Like. I think it's like, it's so, um, I feel like song for song, each song, like it, like I can agree with that to a certain extent, to be honest with you, actually, because like, it doesn't feel like a whole cohesive experience, in my opinion, but yeah. there's just, there's songs on there that I like, that are like some of my favorite Kanye songs ever. There's a couple I don't give a shit about, like there's one, I can't remember the, like I can't even remember the names of the ones I don't like, but ghost town violent crimes i thought about killing you and um yikes are like yikes, four of my yeah. like yikes is like a banger bro like i'm surprised he didn't do a video to that or something like that song is like so good in my opinion and then ghost town the singing on it was like just so epic and and crazy so i just have a special place in my heart for it just because there's so many songs in the, on there that i love but um like i said like it's definitely it's definitely seems like something kind of just threw together and just said fuck it and also, it's not like a whole cohesive experience, like I said. So um, I can understand that. But just because the song's on there, I'm like, nah, I love this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I love Ghost Town and Yikes, especially. Yeah. Horror, bro. Like Yikes the, is... the Pierre Bourne production on Yikes. Yeah, the, the yeah he's a beast, too. He's a beast, too. I'm, like, it, it, he got blessed with that, uh, that production on there. He's a beast, Pierre Bourne, for, for um, sure. Sticking on the topic of music, I know yeah. this is a really big question. That's why I'm mm-hmm. saving it for the end. But uh, based on like, you know, I guess patterns that you see in the industry yeah. mm-hmm. and, you know, the way that trap music is now and it's kind of fading out into pop, where do you see sure. hip hop as a genre in, in the next five, 10 years? Mm, that's like a good what's, question. Or to sum it up, like what's the next big sound after trap? I'm thinking like, cause I like, I, I, I've been thinking about that a lot too, to be honest with you, like that, no bullshit. Like yeah. about that for the past couple months like because 
once I started getting into rap, that's like kind of when trap started becoming a big thing. Like trap has been around, like forms of trap have been around for a long time. But I was like, like when I was like 14, 15, and that was like Fetty Wap was like a big thing. And like, that's when like I got introduced to trap. And uh, then I went back and listened to it. And obviously there's so many forms of it now. Um, I feel like a big thing right now, I don't know if this is like, I try to see if I can dis- differentiate these two genres, but like emo kind of like poppy rap is like a big thing right now. Like Kid Leroy and like Ian Dior and shit like that. Like that's like a big thing. But I like, I think about it, I'm like, is that different? Is that really, really different from like the shit that was popping like a couple of years ago? Or like, ha- like has that shit always been around? Or are we just kind of, just because we're getting all these new people and we're getting new artists like that every day, do we act like it's different? I'm not sure, but like, like, you know, cause I can't really think of any other like sub genre of hip hop that's like, you know, like kind of bubbling up right now except for that like there's a lot of like juice where like obviously you know god rest his soul he was a big one that like had that kind of you know movement going Lil peep again god rest his soul but like kid Leroy and people like him i feel like are making that the wave and like you know like his 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 shit he just dropped with justin bieber's going fucking bananas you know what i'm saying and um you know i feel like that might, and like when i think of that if that's my answer it's kind of disappointing because i'm not like the biggest fan of that kind of like sound um, like I, I try to explore it from time to time with my own music, but like, you know, I, I just, I wish, I hope that we can tap into something soon where it's like, you know, like a new movement rather than just that, you know I'm saying? Something different, but I feel like like the emo pop rap is really kind of popping off and it's like so easily accessible too. Like there's fucking like, it's, you can play it on the radio and then there's like freaking antisocial, like 16 year olds playing that shit too, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, I mean. I feel like for now, that's like the sound that's solidified. That's what it is. Yeah. But I think that's just a phase. Like if you look at emo rock, that was a phase. Yeah. And it's going to fade out. It's going to mature into something else. Yeah. yeah. In terms of sound, I think uh, hip hop, this is my prediction, by the way, but I think hip hop will split into two sides. We got the mainstream side, which is pop. I think pop music right now, like is a majority of that stuff, like a boogie, a kid Leroy, polo G. And yeah, that's yeah. what pop music is. And mm-hmm. then hip hop is almost, I think it's connecting or disconnecting itself from that in the underground. So I've seen yeah. like a rise in the underground last year with like groups like Griselda, like West Side mm-hmm. Don, Conway, oh, yeah. the, mm-hmm. like the real grimy uh, kind of gangster rap sound that you hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that might be like hip hop in five years. When we think of hip hop, that's what we're going to look at. And yeah. we're going to look at as pop as being the, the Polo G, uh, a, a Ju- juice world a kid Leroy, and that's yeah. it's just gonna be disconnected that's a good point that's a good point and i love i love the uh like i love the griselda movement like i really fuck with it and it, like it, it's so it's so weird too because you know it doesn't get like you know because they're they're beloved by like their fans and like the people that like that kind of sound but they don't get a lot of hate from the other side like they're just kind of like yeah. they're just kind of affected and like they're allowed to do their thing because like you know, a couple, like a couple years ago, like I remember there was a time where Jake Cole was getting shitted on, like, cause he was like kind of doing stuff like that, but he still did pop. But like, I feel like they're just making their own sound and they're not getting a lot of support. Benny the Bu- I love Benny the Busher. Um, Holy fuck. Where did he go? Okay, I'll be right back guys. I'm sorry about this little technical error. I'm texting up right now to see if he's uh, still here. What happened? All right, so we had some technical errors, guys. We're back now. We're not dead. Trust me, everything's okay. Uh, where were we? We were talking. We about- were talking about my fault. My fault. That was a uh, like I got some shit fucked up with my iPad. It was doing so good. Um, but um, I think what we were talking about was um with with the Griselda and everything. Yeah. But you know, like I was gonna say, Betty the Butcher is um, you know, like he's probably my favorite out of that whole camp, like out of that whole movement. Um, because I listened to like his his one of his or like his last projects a little while ago, and I was just I was in love with it. Like it was so good. And like I said, like, they're kind of just respected. Like, they're just kind of like, 
you know, allowed to do their own thing. And like, I feel like you said, if they're, if they're like that and people don't really like mess with their sound at all, like they could very well be what you said, like the next big thing. And I would love that. Like I would definitely be down with that. Cause it would be like a touch of like old school, but they're still doing new shit and they're still on new kind of production. Like I would definitely vibe with that for sure. So I think that's a great prediction. Yeah. Definitely. And I like what you said about like the new or the old school mixed with the new production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's an old school jazzier beat. Yeah. but it's uh it's done in a different way it's not like it's a soul song sample over some drum breaks it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a chopped up soul song a lot slower and they mm-hmm. got ad libs and producer takes too that's not something that you heard in the 90s yeah 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 because um, they sense. couldn't they could not possibly like these like these people like benny the butcher and like you know um all these people like Conway and all that like they there's no way they could like get to the top of the industry if they were just rapping over like in you know like New York State of Mind type beats just like they couldn't do it there's no way because people like under 30 are not trying to hear that shit anymore it's just how it is like I love all those like I love a lot of like old hip-hop but it's just there's no like you have to if you want to have that gritty kind of sound you have to have stuff that like younger people I don't want to say younger people like 12 13 but like just the youth or like like young adults would can buy with, you know, you need that if you want to like have that kind of gritty kind of sound that's not really meant for mainstream. That's really important. So um, yeah, like the new production is like if they didn't have that, like they could they they couldn't be, they just be like you know fucking people biting old school sounds and no one's trying to hear that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So they definitely have potential to just like be that kind of next movement. They already are, but they definitely have like potential to just keep it growing and make it something yeah. like. Ins- you know what I mean? Totally, totally. And yeah. uh, before we close up here, uh, I want to ask, what's your album of the year so far? <sighs> oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of good ones. Like, I was waiting for, um, you know, I was hoping Drake could be it because I really want him to fucking drop. But yeah. that didn't happen. I don't know when in three years. I don't know. But um, I really enjoyed uh, J. Cole's album just for the fact that it was out. Um, I really like Benny the Butcher's album. I, I can't, I, got, I probably got to think of that. But um, there's just so many, like, I, like I'm not sure. Cause I, I feel like there's a storm brewing too for the second half of music, like the second half of this year in music, where it's like, I feel like we might have a couple ones that are gonna like become like the top of the echelon. Like if Kendrick drops this year, if Isaiah Rashad, like I heard Isaiah Rashad's dropping um my personal favorite might be the j cole one just because like i feel like it's like him like really hungry and like him just kind of like really in a zone um but album of the year i'm not sure that's a good question i gotta probably give it some time but there's a lot of candidates and there's a lot of ones that have, haven't come out yet that can be future candidates so i'm not sure but, but what would you say though what would you say is your uh is your top right now pray for haiti by my commie oh we're gotcha 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 or Eslet. You got the, the Griselda sound, but I like it because it's uh I think it's more accessible. Yeah. Because it's a lot less grimier, like uh staticky than his other stuff, and it's a lot more clean. So I think it's we're, we're, good we're. to listen to all around. Yeah, we're, yeah we're. I think if Kendrick or Drake drops, then we could have like a, a new album of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm worried I'm worried about Drake because it's like he's kind of I feel like he's kind of been not to trail off too much, but he's kind of been in a lazy kind of, in my opinion, like a lazy kind of you know state where he's just kind of doing what he like he wants to do and which is good but he's just kind of in the same kind of you know like kind of space and i really want certified lover boy to be something just so different and so epic and unique so if that happens i think it could really be that and then kendrick if he's like in a zone kendrick could fucking drop the album of the decade and it's yeah. like only 21 you know what i'm saying so um i think that if i had to pre- predict um, I think Isaiah Rashad is going to be up there. I think Kendrick is going to be up there. I think Kendrick might take it though. Like I think he might, or if Drake is good, he might, he he'll definitely have the most commercially successful hip hop album of the year. In my opinion, I think if he has like a, like six or seven bangers on there that like, you know, like pop off, he's just going to, it's going to be like Scorpion, which I don't really care for, but, um, it's just going to be like any other, uh, other of his albums that just, you know, pop off, like he's going to be a problem, but um, you know, there's so many good ones. Like I got, I got and I got to listen. I got to catch up too. But um, you know, there's definitely a storm brewing for this second half of uh, the year with music. And I'm excited to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. We're we're nearing the one hour mark. Uh, about yes. 47 minutes in, so I got to close the podcast. But uh, gotcha. before we close off, do you have anything else that you'd like to mention? 
Uh, I mean, like, if you want to get in touch with me, like, if, if you, you know, you want to hear my music, I drop a song every month. I'm trying to uh, drop a song before the end of July. Uh, you can hit me up at uh, my, my Instagram, C-Y-B-R-A-0-0. Um, but besides that, I appreciate you having me on. And yeah, just like for, to close, I guess, like what we touched on with the motivational stuff in the beginning, like just um, try to, you know, just keep persistent, man. Whatever you're doing, just keep persistent and like don't get too down or high. Like just make sure that you're like, doing something every day to you know better yourself whether it's your mind or your career or whatever but yeah it's just like just trying to you know do what i love and you know make money off it. that's what i'm trying to do but um but it was a pleasure though man i appreciate you same here thank you for joining us uh thank you everybody for watching thank you everyone who's listening on spotify uh if you're interested you can watch full episodes as well as clips on youtube at fanboy as well as on spotify you can listen to full episodes and you can follow me on Instagram at fanboy underscore IG. Once again, that name is fanboy underscore IG on Instagram. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Cybra, for joining us today. Thank and you, And I'm your host, Calum, or Fanboy, signing out.